I'm reading 2 Peter now, which makes sense because I've just read 1 Peter, but I may or may not have known that yesterday. It just shows you how prepared and far ahead I am in my thinking and planning. Uh, in other news, really, really big news is I have my first fan. I feel like I may have peaked. This is it. This is the top. So thank you, Pauline. That was really, really nice of you. Great. It was lovely to hear your feedback. Um, but yes, my life is now that that's it's not going to get I have one, one fun. So it's, it's not going to get any higher than that. So second Peter, kind of taking on from where we left off. Hope you enjoy it. So second Peter, the first chapter, and I am going to read it from the easy to read version, which is fantastic for me. Greetings from Simon Peter, a servant an apostle of Jesus Christ. To all of you who share in the same valuable faith that we have. This faith was given to us by our God and Saviour Jesus Christ, who always does what is good and right. Grace and peace be given to you more and more, because now you know God and Jesus our Lord. Jesus has the power of God and his power has given us everything we need to live a devoted life to God. We have these things because we know him. Jesus chose us by his glory and goodness, through which he also gave us the very great and rich gifts that he promised us. With these gifts, you can share in being like God, and you will escape the ruin that comes to people in the world because of the evil things they want. Because you have these blessings, do all you can to add to your life these things. To you, to your faith, add goodness. To your goodness, add knowledge. To your knowledge, add self-control. To your self-control, add patience. To your patience, add devotion to God. To your devotion, add kindness towards your brothers and sisters in Christ. And to this kindness, add love. If all these things are in you and growing, you will never fail to be useful to God. You will produce the kind of fruit that should come from your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who don't grow in these blessings are blind. They cannot see clearly what they have. They have forgotten that they were cleansed from their past sins. My brothers and sisters, God called you and chose you to be his. Do your best to live in a way that shows you are really God's. God's called and chosen people. If you do all this, you will never fail and you'll be given a very great welcome into the kingdom of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, a kingdom that never ends. You already know these things. You are very strong in the truth you have, but I am always going to help you remember them. While I am still living here on earth, I think it is right for me to remind you of them. I know that I must soon leave this body. Our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me that. I will try to, my best to make sure you remember these things even after I am gone. We told you about the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. We told you about his coming. The things we told you were not just clever stories that people invented. No, we saw the greatness of Jesus with our own eyes. Jesus heard the voice of the great and glorious God. That was when he received honour and glory from God the Father. The voice said, this is my son, the one whom I love. I am very pleased with him. And we heard that voice. It came from heaven while we were with Jesus on the holy mountain. This makes us more sure about what the prophets said, and it is good for you to follow closely what they said, 
It's like a shining light in a dark place. You have that light until the day begins and the morning star brings new light to your mind. Most important of all, you must understand this. No prophecy in the scriptures come from the prophet's own understanding. No prophecy ever came from what some person wanted to say. But people were led by the Holy Spirit and spoke words from God. I don't know that Second Peter is that much easier than First Peter. Um, but maybe that's just because it's personally challenging to me. I did like um, that chapter. I found um, sort of that middle section when it's talking about the how faith interplays with goodness and then goodness uh, with knowledge and then uh, with perseverance and, and self-control and all those things uh, to be challenging. That's challenging. But it is important, isn't it? Um, that that faith, because I suppose the way I'm interpreting it is that if your faith is not leading to goodness, meaning if your faith is not impacting on actually what you do, so you, you actually want to be a better person because you believe, because you, because you have faith, you want to do things that are right, so that's being good, um, then yeah, what's the point in faith if, if it's not affecting that area of your life? And then, I mean, that's then backed up by knowledge because, well, you need to think about like what's good or think about you know how, how we treat one another because sometimes that actually takes a lot of unpacking. I mean, I would argue that they don't quite fully get um, all that God intends goodness to be uh, when they, you know, they're still supporting slavery, which we, we said a few chapters ago. You know, I don't think that's goodness, but it's, it's a knowledge, isn't it? And it, that, that knowledge is over a period of time. So potentially that's going to change, but you need to be open. You need to be learning. You need to be pressing in. Uh, I think we know why self-control is necessary. Uh we need self-control because it helps um, and perseverance. Um, but most of all, then it ends in love, doesn't it? It ends in love and it ends in love for other people and how you're going to treat them and how you're going to look after them. And um, all of that, if you, you know, I mean, we, we hear it um, more perfectly probably in Corinthians, but if you don't have love, literally all of that, doesn't matter if you don't love one another and if you don't care about people um it's not going to work out so i think that gives us a lot to think about what are your thoughts let's pray lord god we are grateful for the faith that we have received faith in a resurrected jesus christ but we don't want that faith um, merely to be an assent to certain truths that we hold. No, we want that faith uh, to impact and enrich our lives and the lives of the world around us. So, Lord, we do pray that our faith leads to goodness. That we are constantly looking, discovering how our faith impacts how we treat one another and how we look after our world. Let us press into you, God. We pray for perseverance, for self-control, for compassion. And as always, Lord God, we pray most of all for love. We pray that we might have that same love that you showed as you gave uh, Jesus Christ and as Jesus Christ loved his world and the disciples and everyone uh, loved them uh, so much. Lord, may we have that same uh, spirit of love and the desire for the best for other people. In Jesus name we pray. Mm -hmm.